Hello viewers, welcome to KSP Contracting. And no, it's not version 0.24, I have not managed to get my hands on that, if it even exists yet. What I'm getting at is we are looking at, well, you're looking at a new series which is a fair bit more whimsical than the KSP to Mars Real Solar, Syst Real Solar System Try Hard Die Hard series I've currently been running. And if you have watched my recent other videos, you have heard me lament at length about poor frame rates, long, long launches, coupled with a lack of actual real world time to do those, and a new computer that's on the way, which will alleviate most of those concerns. In the meantime, though, there's no reason not to make KSP videos. So, what I'm doing here is a little bit more whimsical. As I said, we're doing KSP contracting, and I'll get to what that entails in a bit. It will be a series, it will be career mode, so we will be unlocking science as we were before, and I've come up with a couple of rules. Rule number one, this is going to be a stock game. No mods, um, and there's a little asterisk, asterisk with that rule. I might decide to add a few mods, but they will never be uh, part mods. They might be um, Ferrum Aerospace, possibly Deadly Reentry, although I think they have parts, and the reason for this will become abundantly clear in a little bit. The second rule is there will only ever be 10 Kerbals available. If they all die, or if they are all stranded out in space, there is nothing we can do, and if, we, if there are some out there, we might rescue them with a robotic mission, but if they're all dead, the game is over, we will have to stop, so there will be some safety measures in place, hopefully. And why I said hopefully, that will become abundantly clear as well, soon. We are going to keep track of time as well. I will allow myself one launch every 30 days. And these are Kerbal days, so that's a little bit smaller time span than it would be if they were human days. These are Kerbal days. So every 30 Kerbal days we get one launch. And every episode... I will track one asteroid. And why one? Because if you don't track them, they disappear, and if you track them all, they will quickly grow to be a million. So I'm going to select one of these, and no matter what the trajectory says, we are going to track it, and if it comes close, we could exploit it for science, and if it comes really close, we might have to do something about it. If we let an asteroid crash on Kerbin, there will be penalties. What exactly? I have not quite decided yet. I could do some size categories, could roll some dice for that, or I could just decide, well, if it hits, we all die, and the series is, is over. Something in between. I'm not quite sure yet. But we will treat these asteroids as serious. Holy moly, they're popping up like things that pop up. So let's go with this one, shall we? 22 seconds ago, size class C, why the hell not? Okay, so hoovering also means selecting, because otherwise I can select for size. We will track this. Track it. And what is this going to do? Our signal strength at 75% puts this at a periapsis of 55,000 kilometers. For now, there is no reason to alarm the general public yet. Now, those are the basic rules of the series. Now, the interesting twist is that you, dear viewer, will be designing the crafts that I will use to fly missions. What missions will I fly? That will, of course, completely depend on the craft I get. Now, not to end this episode on a anticlimax, not flying a craft, I have thrown together a fairly whimsical homebrew craft to get it started and get the science off the ground. We will crew that with Wilfred, Wilfred Kerman. And my plan for this is that after every episode I will put the persistence file on the internet somewhere. You can have, uh, have a go at mucking around in that and make a craft. And this is also the reason why I'm not going to use any part mods so that any craft uh, you use will be uh, compatible with mine and that the persistence file will be accessible to everyone, whether or not they run any mods. I'm a bit curious whether I'm going to get any submissions from you guys, because, well, let's face it, I might not have the viewership to pull something like this off, but we'll see that, and, uh, well, you can use Pastebin or Dropbox or email them to me at mail at donlorenzo.eu. I'll put some of these links in the description as well, make a 
forum thread at the KSP forums also for this nice endeavor. And if you happen to be a YouTuber yourself, have a nice channel with some nifty videos, then of course if you make a nice craft and I use it, I will plug your channel and share that and um, well, you know, this is blah blah blah's vessel from KSP. Well, he does videos like this, like that, yum, yum, yum. and then you know we can promote each other's channels a little bit, which is always nice. But the main as the main goal, of course, is to have whimsical KSP fun and gather science, not die, and protect the planet from asteroids. All very important things. So a crew report from the launch pad. Keep that data. Can try an EVA report as well for those ever important science points. Keep the data board and let's launch this ship. It has two stages and no decouplers and it lifts off very very slowly. I had experimented with adding boosters but that didn't go so well and because every life is precious, remember, remember only 10 astronauts will ever launch yeah only 10 astronauts will ever fly. They might launch multiple times of course. We need them to survive and a slow liftoff isn't that big of a deal in the stock aerodynamic model because going fast wastes energy quite efficiently. Yes, that's an efficient waste of energy. I said, oh dear god, I forgot something. Because there's no decouplers, the fuel drains from the top tanks unless you disable them. So we have gimped our upper stage. Not necessarily though. Maybe we can pump some fuel back from the bottom tank. Because we want, of course, fuel in our upper stage. Well, this is going wrong already. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. If we can get some of the fuel out from the engine before it burns it. And, of course, we also have to do our science reports and transmit them home. I think I'm going to transmit this one. Because now that the engine is firing, we actually generate electricity so we can transmit. Yeah. Okay, that's one tank, and now I can waste a click transmitting. Yes, transmit that, and now let's transfer more fuel from this already stricken craft. Only one and a half tanks it was, so not too bad, and I think we can completely fix it using this. I wonder if this will get to space. I think it will get to space. It might even get into orbit. The requirements for that are not so large on this small Kerbin, but then again, this ascent is about as inefficient as they come, so we shall see. These boosters are not full, by the way. They function as fiery separatrons, so they didn't need to bring their full load of fuel. And it's th time for another crew report. No, don't overwrite your existing crew report. Didn't I transmit that? Review report. Transmit. Go. I thought I did that already, but... Maybe that was the EVA report. Anyway, time for a new crew report. Transmit that also. I'm not going to do an EVA report now because Wilfred will fall and die. And let's try an angle over towards the pole so we land on land and not on water. For, of course, added science and glee and joy. I do hope you will send me crafts to play with because I think it will be fun to launch other people's rockets and see what they come up with. And that stage burnout. Here we go. Behold the might of a solid booster staging. Here we go. One, two, three. Separate. There we go. Now throttling up the liquid engine here. And, oh, of course, now we need to unlock the tanks. Oh, forgot to fill this one. Wonderful. Unlocking the tanks. Unlocking the tanks. And this will boost us further. Now we're really going somewhere. Let's have a look at another crew report. Yes, upper atmosphere. Transmit that. We might even... Well, we'll probably make it to space at least. I'm guessing no orbit today though. We will land in a new place, that will give us some science, so that's good. And we will probably be able to do a... We might be able to do an a, a EVA from the upper atmosphere. I'm going to cut engines. We can use them for landing. You see, that's a, a good skip through space. And I'm going to try and get an EVA report going from 50 kilometers up. 60 kilometers up because there that's still in the atmosphere 
and I'm hoping that the atmosphere is thin enough there not to rip Wilfred from his ladder. And as I say these things, I do wonder if I want to risk the life of one of my 10 astronauts on this. And the answer is, of course. So, coming up on 60 kilometers, let's pop him outside. Let's see how that goes. He can feel the wind rushing past his helmet. Upper atmosphere, keep it. You're starting to feel you should really get back into the ship. Well, get back into the ship then. And transmit that home. And then immediately go outside again, please, because now we're in space. If you report from here, that's eight science points, keep that. And of course also a crew report from here. And that's five science points. And now we're going to fire up the engine to get some electricity to transmit this home. Review the stored data, transmit, review report, transmit. Let's have a look at our resource monitor. Not enough electricity, throttling up more, get me some power. Go on. I think it has transmitted, and now we are out of fuel. So that's a good space hop, and we can of course try to get some more EVA science. Over Kirbin's grasslands, we can recover that. We can't transmit it. Well, we could transmit one more, but 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 we are not going to do that. We're just going to bring it all in. With a bit of time acceleration, getting some EVA reports. Yeah, Kerbin's Highlands. We are rocking the science this first shot. And now that we're floating in space very, very comfortably, let me tell you what the rules will be for ship submissions. Don't worry, they will be simple. I will expect uh, highlands i think we had that already yes jump the experiment um i'm expecting a stock only craft i don't care if you have mods installed yourself but i don't want any mod parts on the ship because obviously i won't be able to load it and use it also i would like if you kept the part count on the launch pad below about 300 that would give me a semi acceptable launch frame rate on my old computer and that's it Otherwise, go nuts, make something crazy. Uh, you can feel free to attach guidelines, instructions, or mission targets. And equally, I can feel just as free to either heed those or ignore them completely. So, the goal is to make a fun craft that will get science and be either be fun or be interesting. So, or, or just do something. I don't have the right to be picky yet. Well, I have every right because I just decided that, but I don't have the luxury to be picky yet because I don't think I'll be I'll be I'll be drowning in submissions. Not really, unfortunately, not. So one quick EVA report. It's all Highlands here, so that's a pity. But maybe we can do a crew report in space near Kerbin. Yeah, keep that data. So now we are coming in for landing, and we are in the atmosphere again. So don't dare step outside no more. And when we land, we will, of course, try and get some data from our landing site. Let's use some time acceleration to hasten that moment. And of course, I want to deploy our parachute so that we may face the right way when it fully deploys and not... Ooh, I'm feeling we are going to experience quite a high number of g-forces. We are at 1700 meters per second and only 26 kilometers of altitude. I do hope that Wilfred doesn't die on his first go. We are at 9 g's. Oh, I forgot this is of course not a problem at all. We don't have deadly re-entry and the g-forces don't kill him. Otherwise we were at a survivable level, 8.6 Gs, that is completely fine. And we are now descending towards the surface. Can we do another crew report here? No, well we could, but it would override something. When we're dangling from the parachute, we could try an EVA report, but then again we get the same data from the EVA report on the ladder once on the ground, so we're not going to risk it. We want to keep Wilfred alive, of course. So, 
I'm just waiting for the parachute to fully deploy, then I can use physical time warp safely to drop it to the ground. And one thing that the stock game has definitely going for it over the real solar system mod is that this uh, elevation difference on the terrain looks a lot, lot better. It's not smeared out as much. Sure, it's less realistic, but it's a lot prettier. So that counts for something too. Let's drop that down. And in the comments on my asteroid redirect video, Nathan and I were talking about grabbing asteroids and building stuff out of them in orbit. So, if you make your ships asteroid grabbing capable enabled, <laughs> then we can do something like that. But first, of course, we have to get the science for that. Somewhat crashy landing, but you know the saying, any landing you can walk away from is amazing. So, let's have at it. Let's take a soil sample, an EVA report, of course, as well, a surface sample. And, well, we're not going to bother with the flag. So, let's see. Oh, we can leave it here if we... Oh, no, we want to recover the vessel for more science as well, of course. I just want to get into the capsule because then it's just one click instead of two, and I'm lazy like that. So, here we go. Science, a very basic first mission but a good opportunity to lay out the rules and to skip that first tier of science for you guys. We have 60 points. Let's head on over to the R&D facility and unlock these juicy parts. Now, if you do build a ship, you can specify a research direction you would like, and I can either heat that or not. I'm not going to commit to any crazy decisions you might make. But hey, I am flying your ship, so I might heat your preference. Um, let's go for this smaller engine, that's always nice to have, 15 points for that. I think we can just get it all. This has separ side separators, we need that definitely, 18 points for this, and 20 points for that, let's get that. So we have the second and third tiers unlocked, and I think that should give you a nice starting point to build some ludicrous rockets to get to the moon, to Minmus, to asteroids, or just muck about in orbit. All is allowed. Everything is encouraged, and I'm looking forward to your submissions. This was Lorenzo. Fly safe, design amazing crafts, send them to me, and you will see them in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.